Hi, thanks for joining me today. My name is Anissa. I am the Gasfish Administration Council project lead. Today, I am going to show you the new features we have added to the admin console to support Java EE7. For this version of admin console, we keep the same familiar look and feel from previous release so that if you are familiar with the console, you can jump right in and use the new features that we added for Java EE7. There are several new screens added, and then there are also numerous enhancements that we added to the consoles to make, your, to make the use um, easier. There is a couple bug fixes that we, um, that we have from the previous release. Here is a list of new features that we have added to the console for Gashwish 4.0. The batch applications, the JS Now 352 support is one of the uh, features that we have added. JSNOW 352 defines a programming model for batch application and a one time for scheduling and executing jobs. I will show you later in the demo how you will be able to use the console to do the configuration and look at the list of jobs that the application has submitted. Another main feature that is added is related to Concurrency Utilities API, JSR236. Some of the resources is added in the resource node, and you will be able to create, list them, and look at them. This release also added a few attributes that is related to your logins. Also, the display of the logical JNDI name for your application to use. Here is the support for the batch applications that I mentioned. I'm not going to repeat it right now, and we are going to look at this in the demo later on. And here is the resources relating to concurrency utilities API, four of them, and you can do list, create, edit, delete any of these resources. As I mentioned earlier, we have added a few attributes to relating to the logger. Um, there are some new log format, the ODL, which stands for Oracle Diagnostic Logging, and there are new logging levels added, some of the fields that you can exclude from the logs, um, and then the maximum history files that you can keep, or if you want to rotate based on the date change, etc. Rather than going through the slides, I think it's better to see the admin console in action. So I'm going to show you the demo right now. Here is the familiar home screen or the common task screen for the admin console. You go to the console by landing localhost colon 4848. For someone who is not familiar with the console, let me do a quick overview and then how the, the console is being laid out. You have the header area which gives you the home button and then the about button which shows you what build you are using. And then the help button which shows you the context sensitive help. It gives you the information relating to the page that you are working on. On the left hand side is the navigation tree. There is a tree node domain which allows you to configure the whole the, your, the domain that you are working on, such as adding the administrator password, creating pastor, password aliases. And then there is the admin server where you can start or stop, look at the log files, enable or disable secure administration. You notice that there is a new tab called Batch that we have added to this. And this is to add there for our batch support. Couple three nodes relating to cluster management. And then here is the application node where you deploy your application, do the launching. Launch, you can launch your application and do your testing. Here is the resources node. And you notice that there is the concurrent resources node that is added here. And then you go down will be the configuration screens for you to configure the server. Now let us go look at the first features that we have added. Let me deploy an application which submits the jobs. So I have a simple wall file that I will deploy. This is a, just a very simple wall file that displays a payload, um, the information of employees. Now let's take a look at the, what is inside this application. You see that there are several components, and one of that is the job submitter servlet. And this is the service that actually do the job submission. Let me launch and try that. So here is the job submitter servlet 
is this paying the records, the employee. We have five employees here, and he is the base salary. This button here is going to submit the job to calculate the payroll. Here, the job is finished, and it's based on the base salary, add the bonus tax, and then do it for them, and then give you the net amount. Let me do it for another month. I'll do another submit. And I may as well do March. So you see that we have I have submitted three jobs. Let's see how I will be able to get information about the jobs that I have just submitted. I go to the server node and the batch tab. Here you see that here is the three jobs that I have submitted. Every job submitted has a unique execution ID. You click on the execution ID to look at uh, the detailed information about your job. It tells you the job name, the step count, the status, is the uh, exit status, and the start and end time. Notice that this is a job parameter. So this is for the February 2014. Now let's take a look at the execution steps. This shows that my best job only has one step. The name is process. And then for each of the for each of the steps, we also show you the step matrix, which is this connection to the database. You see that we have the read count five because we have five employees. And then after doing all the calculation, you probably write it back down. And so you have another white count of five. So this is how you can see the detail of each job that you have submitted. Let's move to the configuration screen. Each of the batch jobs that you submitted, you need a data source to hold the information. And so we are by default is using the JDBC underscore underscore timer pool. You can change it to another data source if you want. And then because we want to be able to do the jobs asynchronously, we are using the managed executor service that provides the trust for us to do the jobs. And you can also create another one and set it here. So that's uh, how we so that's how the batch um, support is added in the console. Let's go to the second features that I would like to show you, which is relating to the concurrency utilities API. Here is the four nodes that we have added, which is relating to the concurrency resource, the contest services, managed thread factories, managed executor service, and the executor and the scheduled executor service. Notice that this is the one that we, that we just used it for our batch for our batch applications. You should also see that here is the logical JNDI name that we are displaying to you. So you can use this in your application. This gives you more information about this um, service. Managed executor services are used by applications to execute submitted tasks asynchronously, and that's how we was using it just now. The tasks are executed on threads that are started and managed by the container. The container context will be propagated to the threads, and this is the four contacts that will be propagated. Here are some of the pool settings that you can set relating to the threads. We can also take a look at the managed scheduled executor service, which is very similar, except that this has uh, this will be um, on it on a time based, and you can create it. Let me try one. I just want that for my security, and let's say, and then some of the pool setting, I just take the default. You see that this is being created. And since this is not the pre-configured our box um, service, we do not have the logical JNDI name. And then the context information that will be propagated will be security only, which is what I have just said. So the next thing that I would like to show you will be related to masking of confidential properties, which is related to the resource adapter. Let me deploy a resource adapter. And here is so my resource adapter is um, so my connector is deployed, and I'm going to do the configuration of it. 
I will create the resource adapter configs. You can see that there is the built-in one GMS R GMS RA, which has these properties. Because this one do not specify that the password is confidential, so we are saying that in the clear text. If you select the one that we just deployed, you see that we have three properties. One is the test name, password, and username. And password is now masked because, the, you cons because this is specified as confidential uh, value in your deployment descriptor. Let's take a look at the deployment descriptor. See, this is the config property, the password. And because here, I saw that this is um, conf confidential being true. That's why it's being masked on the console. The other property, for example, the test name, the confidential, the config property confidential is set to false. So we are showing you in clear text, which is what it is right now. One more thing that I would like to show you, and I mentioned just now, is relating to the logger settings, which is relating to the server.logs or any of the, um, or the loggers that you are, are setting the attributes to. Here is the logger setting. You see that there is a few attributes added, like for example, the log file logging format. You can select ODL or the previous like, uniform log formatter. By default, we have the as ODL stands for Oracle Diagnostic Logging. And here is the fields that if you do not want your service log to include, like if you don't want the user ID to be included, you can select it here and then do a save. You see that once you are save, this information will be carried on and will be used it the next time the server will start. And this is also telling you that the restart is required because you have changed the logger settings attributes. I guess by now I have shown you the few um, main features that we have added to the admin console. Um, we will not, I will not have time to go through all of them, so I hope you will be able to download that and try it out and export it yourself. That concludes the webinar for today, and you can always stay connected with Java EE7 and get the information by any of these means here. Thank you.